Hi, everybody. Thanks so much for joining me today in the locker room. I'm Alan Locker, a good friend of mine and a good friend of these ladies who covered the soap industry for many, many years. Stephen Bergman helped wrangle these four talented actresses who spent some time causing trouble in Pine Valley over the years. Thank you, Stephen, for putting me in touch with Catherine Gardner, who played Rosa Santos, Carrie Genzel, who played Sky Chandler, Lauren Roman, who played Laura Kirk English, and T.C. Warner, who played Kelsey Jefferson. Let's bring them out here and reminisce about their time working together on All My Children. Please welcome to the locker room, Catherine Gardner, Carrie Genzel, Lauren Roman, and T.C. Warner. Hi, ladies. Hello. Hello. How are you? Great. Excellent. Great to see you all. Yeah, um, I, you. I was going to say, I'm going to do this. It's a little better. Uh, Catherine is joining us from the future. It's 4 a.m. where she is in Singapore. So we really appreciate you getting up so early to, to spend some time here today. My pleasure. I would do anything to come and visit all my friends and all my children friends. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so excited to be here. No, anytime there's a reunion, I'm very excited. I, I love seeing all these wonderful familiar faces, especially to share as much of um, the, the the memories and we can we can discuss some great things over in the next hour and I can't wait to share exciting news and talk about everything that we've always you know kind of laugh about and, and stuff and share things with the fans that we've always been that they're so loyal so I I would do anything I'd get up at any hour <laughs> I could be on Mars they, and get up <laughs> they are definitely loyal that is absolutely correct absolutely. Um, yeah, you, you mentioned backstage that you all had seen each other at an all my children reunion about three years ago in California yes. what, what stands out from that reunion in particular Oh my God! Carrie. Oh, tough question. Yeah, okay, like Carrie, so many, you, know, you. <laughs> I, I, you know, just seeing so many of the actors. You know, it had been so many years, and there's people definitely that I've kept in touch with over the years. But there's a lot of people that you lose track of, and I know from myself, I've moved around to you know different cities, different countries, and Catherine, it's hard to keep track of. But uh, you know, it's just great to catch up. It was. Uh, I remember like someone handing me an All My Children script. I haven't held one of those since the 90s. The green, <laughs> copy, the green, the green cover. The green yeah, cover great. with everything on it. And I was like, wow. Like I felt like I went it back. Was to you, right? yeah, yeah. It was so cool. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and it was also cool to see, you know, the the One Life to Live actors, mm -hmm. too, because that was our sister show and they were up the street and we would, you know, jump on the jitney and go up there or they would do... We went to know, the commissary like, together. Yeah, we went absolutely. to the Absolutely. So together. it really felt like a family reunion and it was great to, to yeah. uh, be able to talk to the fans who, you know, as Catherine already mentioned, are so loyal and uh, so fun and they were so excited. So it was just great to catch up with everyone. Yeah, Did you all shoot... Like it felt like we were doing some uh, PR things. You know, like every weekend we'd all go if it was One Life to Live or a lot of the daytime mm -hmm. people would always go and raise money for oh yeah, cancer awareness and, and so on mm -hmm. and so forth. So it felt like that. And I felt like we were on a, uh, a fan excursion just having the time of our life back in, in a swing. So it was fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah, was was your nice studio time. at West End Avenue or were you, you yeah, were, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. 66. 320 West, yeah. uh, 320, yeah. uh, 320 West 66. Yeah. yeah. So let, let's go back. Take me back. Uh, what do you remember about your audition for your particular role, Catherine? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think I, you know, the, the thing is, is that I had just gotten off of, I was doing a Broadway tour. And then I had just gotten off a Broadway tour. And then my manager said, oh, you have an audition for all my children. And my mother was like, oh, my God, it's all my children. Because you know, <laughs> yeah, and I'm like, too. I better get it. If I don't get it all, I, my mother's gone. No, as a matter of fact, I think I bared a very close resemblance to, uh, uh, to Julia, to Sydney Penny, uh, especially yeah. when she was young. In it. And when I was young. So I think that had a lot to do with it. Felicia Minnie Bear was, uh, at the time, in charge and, and so was Judy by Wilson. Beautiful people. I I don't remember that much of a callback. It was just kind of like, that was it. And I think when I came off of a Broadway show into daytime, it was a little bit different. And I remember I'm young, yeah, so I don't different. really know yeah. what's going on. I'm, I'm, I just, okay, well, where am I going now? You know, and I'm thinking it's Broadway, you know, <laughs> it wasn't Broadway. 
It's not different. It's daytime. Not different. Not so much different than it would be for prime time, for example. I mean, when I did when I when I did Broadway, like then daytime and then prime time, daytime to prime time is totally different. Very then different. Then you have like Kim Delaney, who I actually I worked with on NYPD Blue, thank God, because she's an uh, an alum of of all my children as well. Mm-hmm. I did a show with her and she's like Girl, because it's not this <laughs> what you can't believe this what it's like it's it's taped versus film and there's a whole different mechanism and things that happen as you guys know but um i remember having a wonderful opportunity and just saying to myself i didn't really understand it at first but then i got the like i got it together and i was like wow this is a great family and i we became so close so close and still to this day we're just such a close family and that's the most important thing to me because it's something I can carry with me I don't realize it then but I realize it now and I think you know random things random things don't happen randomly you can meet somebody randomly but it's not necessarily random maybe your subconscious is doing it but there's nothing that happens randomly by chance maybe you're but these types of things ended up being life changes for us. And that's what mm-hmm. was like the mm-hmm. most beautiful part of our story, you know? And, so, and Lauren, what do you yeah. remember about yours? Well, I, w- I definitely wanted to share about that because it's kind of amusing. But since Catherine was saying her daytime to primetime experience was with Kim Delaney, I have to share mm-hmm. something that I think fans will get a kick out of. My first prime time gig when my contract was up, I moved to LA and um, my first prime time gig was on Buffy the Vampire Slayer. So it was like reuniting with Sarah Michelle Geller. Yeah. And it was really funny because to me, the biggest difference was not like the change in tone or whatever, but it was like having to do something 10 times. Like, because yeah. we, you know, we do something Got like, it. okay, Got moving it. on, you know, and so being like, oh, okay, we're waiting here while they reset the lights, and now we're doing a different shot, and oh, continuity, uh oh, so it was, uh, it was a really crazy experience. My all my children, which goes back to my all my children audition as well. The first role that I auditioned for on all my children, which I grew up watching with my mom and grandma, so it was a huge deal. Um, Huge was deal. huge deal like yeah. dream job but I was totally wrong for the part I don't know Carrie if you might remember this but my first audition for all my children was for Kendall Erica's daughter oh, wow which I know right I was so wrong for it I mean it was really fun to play evil for the audition but like that was it and that was the part of course that Sarah Michelle Geller got and so then my second was another character. I can't remember what her name was, but she didn't last very long. I got a call back on that one. And then for Laura Kirk English, my audition scene was with Noah, Keith Hamilton Cobb. Oh, wow. Which I still don't understand why they did that because I don't think my character interacted with him even once. <laughs> so I'm not, you know, usually they're looking for chemistry and whatever, um, maybe to see if I could hold my own, I guess. But when I got the screen test, it just, it was so cool to just be on the set and then to get the gig. Was Was your screen test with Keith? It was. Yeah, they might, Boy, you know, he I might have been I had footage of that. That would be awesome. <laughs> an actor who was available or they might have had intention. You know, you never know. What You're right. Maybe they, yeah, maybe they went in a different direction. But yeah, I'm yeah. really glad because, of course, he was fantastic. So that made it a blast. And TC, yourself? So my audition was very, very interesting because my perception of daytime television was you know, like these be- three beautiful faces here. And, and, and I'm, I'm more of a, a character type personality actor. And, and so my audition, uh, it, it basically said she was a runaway. So I got to go and audition with no makeup on and sweats and, and, <laughs> and just completely have fun with the, the, the craft. And, and I did just that. And I walked on and it was with Brian Gaskell and, and we did the scene a, a couple of times and, and I take direction and changes and so forth very easily. 
So I had fun with that and went out and had fun in New York City and then uh, came back and I was, I was in a similar situation, not that I was coming from Broadway, but I was coming from doing a lot of TV movies and, and uh, recurs on nighttime show so Very i had different. no idea of this one take charlie move on to the next <laughs> and, and, so forth. and so i for the first couple of weeks i wore this green sweatsuit with no makeup <laughs> like i didn't have anybody i didn't go to the 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 hair and makeup really for that long it mm -hmm. was more about memorizing the lines and then there i was with coming from memorizing maybe three pages in a day and repeating that over and over and over and over and over and over and over in every angle and, and doing it the exact same way and so on and so forth to a very relaxed to 40 pages a day to memorize mm -hmm. and the front burner storyline, which incredible Lorraine Broderick. And, and of course with Felicia Monet Bayer and, and um, you know, just really great people that, I, I look like a deer in the headlights. I went, what? What do you mean we're moving on? You, girl, you if pulled you, it off. You, I never knew. You wore sweats for like two months, but I remember Carrie like wearing a gorgeous negligee for like two months as well. Oh, right. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. That was I was, like, I was yes. the fully clothed character on the show. Still? She's in this nightgown forever. Well, it's really <laughs> funny that we have that commonality because I was a runaway from New York. And I had actually, all of us, you know, we're like stuck in the same outfit for eons before we finally changed clothes. But for my um, audition, I had worn a camouflage jacket from my dad's time in Vietnam. He was a Marine. Wow. And wow. so when I got, you know, so it was like so authentic. I mean, like, you know, ripped and, you know, very warm, uh, vintage. And so when I got the character, uh, got the gig and they were costuming the character they mm -hmm. liked that look and so they had brought in a couple different things and they didn't like anything as much and so they were like hey would you mind just wearing that I was like no that would be amazing so <laughs> I ran around in that jacket <laughs> for That's eons amazing. before That's I amazing. stole something from mm -hmm. Myrtle's to change clothes so yeah but the support the support that I got was very wonderful and, and humbling and it, it, it daytime people are very humble and they're mm -hmm. they're very respectful of their fans and there's no egos that are running around and it's it's very much one supporting the next and and that's where it becomes that family element i felt like when we were at that reunion we, we had yeah. it was just you know a week had passed not years had passed right, yeah when we had <laughs> yeah. seen each other next Right that's up, that's when you can really uh, feel connect, you know, a connection when something like that happens, when it doesn't feel like that time. And Carrie, what about you and your audition? Well, funny enough, it's so funny that there's like connections between all of us more than I realized. But I actually, the yeah. very first time I had screen tested for all my children was for the role of Kelsey. <laughs> oh, wow. I figured that yeah. one out. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, and I don't really have much recollection at all about that screen test. <laughs> um, I remember Brian, but I don't really remember anyway. And so clearly that went to the right actress. And uh, I went back to LA and then got a call months later. Um, and I auditioned for Sky in LA. Judy, our casting director, came out to LA and, um, and I read for her there and then got the screen test and flew to New York. And um, I didn't really think that I was right for it. I thought I wasn't the right age and I thought, well, I'll go to New York and, you know, do, do what I do, you know, do my best. And, um, I auditioned with John Callahan, who I ended up working with a lot. Um, and I went back to the hotel, I was supposed to take off the next day back to LA. And I got a call from production saying, don't get on the plane. And I went like, what's going on? And they're like, we need, That's you to, a good sign. we need you to come back to the studio. And I'm like, for what? And they're like, well, we'll tell you when you get here. And I'm like, okay. Um, and so I got, went back to the studio. They put me through the works again. And they said, we just want to do a chemistry test with you and Michael Sabatino. And so Michael was already on set. And I went up there and we basically just sat down on the couch 
on a set, a random set that they were using, I guess. And uh, we talked about stuff. Like we talked about <laughs> dogs and we talked about, I mean, I'd never met him before. And, yeah. you know, my mom, I grew up watching Days no. and, and, you know, so I knew days him from and, Days, right? Yeah. Yeah. And so yeah. I was like, this is really and, and, and Knott's Landing. Chip yeah, I was Knott's like, Landing. this is so weird. And I'm sitting there, and so we, I, you know, we, we just talked about whatever. And then finally, they're like, "Great, thank you, moving on." And I, they like <laughs> drove me to the airport, and I was what? like, "What?" <laughs> and that was on a Friday, right? Mm -hmm. And so I, you go through the whole week. Why do they always do these things? You are in suspense you go all the weekend. Whole weekend, <laughs> right? Not knowing. And Monday afternoon, I got a call from my manager, and he said, "Kid, your life just changed." You're getting Aww. on a plane tomorrow at 6 a.m. You booked the role. And I was like, what? And because, you know, they had been looking for to cast that role for so long, they actually had left basically holes in episodes that she was supposed to be in. Oh, but they wow. hadn't asked for all yet. That so when I got went into my dressing room the first time, That's there was crazy. a stack of scripts. <laughs> Like this because they're I had to like bang out now. She and and you it. turned around and walked out. Yeah, I was like, holy <laughs> right. shit. But you know, she didn't say a lot at the beginning. So it, you know, it looks scarier than it was. But um, yeah, we had to get all those shows done to get caught up. And then like wow. a few weeks later, and I couldn't tell anybody who I was. I couldn't tell anyone that I was Sky. And um and a few weeks later, I was at the daytime Emmys at Radio City Music Hall, okay? <laughs> Getting out of a limo going, what is happening? What just happened? <laughs> it hadn't been revealed yet that I was Sky, so I had people running up to me going, I know who you are, like freaking out. And I was like, okay, that's a good guess. And I'm like trying to get out of like the line of fire. But it was really crazy. I'd never lived in New York before. I didn't know anyone in New York. And it was just like, here you go. You're going to be on TV every day, you know. But, you know, I worked that's with wild. some incredible cast People. members there. I worked with, you know, Michael Sabatino and Robin yeah. Matson, who was amazing. Yes. And Susan Lucci. And then, you know, it just went on at David Canary, who... I'm yeah. still jealous oh, that you... I, 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 I love, yeah. I love yeah. working like that, I, too. I, 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 I will get them. to to David in a minute, but Carrie, one of your fans, Keith, was asking, I, I assume you knew you were replacing someone? Yes. Oh, I, was it in, I mean, I doubt it was very intimidating because she had been off the canvas for five years, wow. but you know, it might've been, I'm just curious in your eyes, was it, was there you any? Know, I was grateful. I don't know how people walk on and like replace someone like one show to the next. Like that's oh, a wow, lot of yeah. pressure. Happens a lot. Because, like Robin had been gone like five or six years and so long that like when I was asking other cast members about Sky, they were like, ah, uh, yeah, I think so. Like no one could remember anything <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> because you're doing 40 pages a day. No yeah. one six years ago, what happened with a character that's not there. And it was really the fans that helped me like put the pieces together. Right. I would get these mm -hmm. letters from fans with detailed like timelines of what Sky had been doing. And it really helped me so much to go <laughs> together. I um, read I read an interview where you said that. I really love that. that. Honestly, yeah, they, they yeah, helped me do my job. You know, we didn't have social media. Then now it'd be so much easier. I could put a tweet out and I'd have. Right. You, know, the tons whole, of stuff. Yeah. You, you would have the whole backstory in a Bible. I know. I still get the backstory sometimes. <laughs> people, well, like, you know, she's a quarter main and now she's a da, 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 da. like I get like the whole thing. So funny enough, I've actually never met Robin, but, um, you know, I was grateful to have that time in between so that I could make Sky my own and yeah. I was the first hire under Francesca James so um, there was like a change in regime and kind of a change I think in tone and so I really just tried to focus on what was in front of me and and do what I could with that and um, and just enjoy being there. It was like boot camp. I had yeah. I had Francesca on my show. What an amazing woman. I know. Yeah, she That's yeah. amazing. An right. amazing woman. TC, one of the fans is asking, what does TC stand for? It doesn't stand for anything. One of the most okay. common questions in this world. <laughs> I'll tell you what I do say to a, a lot of people. Know. So when I say I grew up in, in Santa Fe, New Mexico, right? Um, I'll tell them out there we have uh, Native Americans. And, you know, <laughs> when you're born, 
you're named by the first thing that you see. Mm-hmm. And the second that my parents looked at me, they said, trouble coming. <laughs> oh, that's a scary. Is that true? <laughs> Is that no, really it's true? not true. Oh, oh my it's goodness. a great story. Yeah. It's a great story. Oh, yeah. I love that. Love, yeah. love that. And and that same uh, fan, their screen name is Mjello, was asking, what camera are you using? Because they love how you blurred your background. Very nice. Oh, I don't know. I'm on a, a, a new MacBook Pro. Oh, or... it's probably a new... It's an M1. A new, a new set. Yeah. New setting they have. I should check that yeah. out. <laughs> um, do you first, all remember yeah. your first day? Oh, your yeah. first day on set? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Go, go ahead, Lauren. Bagels. Yeah. Well, it was, I mean, it was amazing because I was working with Julia Barr and um, I was, I had run away from New York City. So I was, you know, wearing the j- jacket and homeless and I was digging through trash in the park to get to look for food. And so I was digging out of a, tr- I mean, it was so unsoapy. I just loved that my <laughs> character was like the anti soap character. Um, because you'll notice, fans, uh, you hardly ever see anybody eat on a soap opera. Just, you know, keep an eye out. You'll notice that. So she found me, uh, Brooke found me digging through the trash can. And then she bought me like an ice cream, which I like stuffed in my face and devoured. She got me something else, which, so I was just like shoving food in my face, which, which was, which was really fun. So yeah, that, that was my first day. TC. So Julia Barr, amazing, incredible, wonderful woman that she is. One of uh, my first scenes was coming into the shelter that uh, I'm sure, Lauren, you remember that. I the didn't shelter. know you went to the shelter too. <laughs> but you were, my, my character was was hidden because you were on one side of the, the shelter, but we weren't supposed to know each other because I was part of the Martin family. Oh, so okay. we didn't, nobody in, in Pine Valley <laughs> wanted to know that. The family that can do no wrong. <laughs> but I right. got beat up. I guess you did okay. I got beat up and stolen from, but what else? <laughs> what else? <laughs> so it was with... It was with Julia Barr. Oh my God, and, I'm laughing so hard. I'm crying. Um, and I didn't know, you know, I I was very lost. So I was kind of tugging on the shirt tails of of Eva and and John and mm-hmm. and Julia Barr and and everybody for that matter, anybody who would respond to me. But anyway, um, and it was describing that I needed to find somebody to, to trust in, and it was interesting because there was so much material to learn blocking stepping and it was a fast food rendition uh, and i wasn't used to it. it wasn't it wasn't normal for me so i was ready to say is there a possibility of a second take and yeah and could we please <laughs> those cameras <laughs> what on their wheels would go flying to the next step <laughs> yeah, and that, 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 say, that rarely would happen only, only unless me. you do things backwards, like say the word God, or if you say things backwards, like I'm I'm here to wrong or right, um, <laughs> you know. I, I just have to real quick because fans will get a kick out of this. Well, first of all, the God thing, TC, is really funny because there was a scene. I can't even remember what was happening. It was so emotional. I was really upset about something. And I was like, oh, my God. And they're like, cut. Yep. And I was like, what? There's no God in Pine Valley. <laughs> right. It's like, okay. But I, re- I like very briefly crossed oh. paths on the show with Sarah Michelle Geller, And we were standing in hair and makeup and had a conversation. And she was like, hey, just FYI, if you ever want them to stop a take, just say the <laughs> first word. Like, because pretty much anything else you do, they will keep going. But if you say hey, that's the first a great, word, that's a great stop. lesson she gave I got that so same, thanks, Sarah. Yep. I got that same tip. I don't remember who told me, but someone else said that to me when I started. That, is a great that was tip. that was actually Don Callahan one time. Um, there was, of course, there's a uh, there's a, a wedding and a funeral in every scene that I'm ever in. Okay, it's really very rare that it's a wedding or a funeral. So I think we were there for I think it was Julia's wedding, uh, the Cinderella one, which took oh. forever. Oh it was my like gosh, forever yeah. and a day. It was forever and ever and ever. I I remember I stayed at your house, TC, for like 
the whole in a week because I'm like, yeah. this is too much for me. I can't, I got to go 13 blocks. Not you know. So I'm sitting myself, I'm like, okay. And then John was like, he was so done. May he rest in peace, but he still has a fabulous sense of humor. So I know he'll appreciate this. So then Eileen Hurley, who played Myrtle, was mm-hmm. sitting there and he was, she was trying to pronounce Mateo Santos, but she kept saying Matteo Santos. <laughs> and so <laughs> and so everybody's like, no, it's Mateo Santos. And then and then John's like, hit me old brandy again, eh? Come on. And then <laughs> and Mira, and Mira comes in and she's it depended, okay, it depended upon who was your director. Like it uh-huh. was either a block dress tape day or it was an item by item day. And it depended on whether or not you have to show up at like 7 a.m. or you know, your call time wouldn't be till four. It would make a difference. It would totally make a difference as to how and when you would have to show up because depending on what the director wanted to do, you either had to show up early or they would just take it like Mm -hmm. item by item and then you can come in, block it as you want. You you guys know. But for the fans, I want you to understand. So you would either take like a 13-hour day or you would Mm -hmm. take like a five-hour, but you always worked. Still, it was a lot of work, but I remember even... Even my first day on, on All My Children was, I remember walking down the dressing room and hearing De- David Canary, like, running scales, like, la, 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 la. And mm-hmm. I'm, like, thinking, like, wait, do we have to sing in this thing, too? And I'm thinking, yeah. like, do we sing in this, too? Yeah. We get to sing, too? <laughs> like, thinking, should we warm up the pipes? You know, it's so cute. I had I the same it. voice teacher as David. He was, yeah, he was amazingly talented. And, and Carrie, it, do you remember your first? I do. It was such a whirlwind. Um, but it was my introduction to the white nightgown uh, that I lived in for <laughs> months. <long> time. months <laughs> and that I think they only cleaned one time. Oh. So it got a little scary. We used to joke wow. that it was running around in the halls when we weren't there. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, it probably was, you know, and I didn't have a lot to say really, but I was like trapped in that attic and, you know, working with, you know, Michael Sabatino, who's just so wonderful. And, um, you know, it was tricky because, you know, on paper, it was like, well, Sky is all of these things, but she was none of those things when she came Brand on. You. I, yeah. am- I was drugged and had amnesia. And, you know, so it was like, <laughs> oh, well, who the well, different. Is she? Yeah. And I was in that attic for quite a long time. I did get a roommate eventually. I, you know, Robin Matson, you know, um, you know, <laughs> joined me in the uh, other room. But, you know, it, it was uh, it was just it was really exciting. Um, my mom didn't watch all my children prior to me getting on the show, but she I grew up watching Days and Another World. And um, so I was familiar with daytime and I knew, you know, how exciting this was and how excited she would be. And she watched it from the day that I came on until the very end. (laughs) She never stopped. Um, And, you know, just to be a part of such an incredible troupe of actors and, you know, Mm -hmm. even the day players, you know, that you get when you're in New York or from Broadway. Well, Catherine just said Ann Mira. I mean, yeah. And Mira. Mira. Yeah. And oh my gosh, Anne yeah. Mira, the first time she I broke met a, she broke a director's stick. There was a director. I'm sure she did. Name, name. First time I met Anne Mira, I never um, funny. Yeah, yeah, I was in the white funny. nightgown and she came into the hair and makeup room and she just stopped and she goes, "Who in the hell are you supposed to be?" <laughs> it was so funny. <laughs> that's how I met her and I was like, "That's Love perfect. Her. I'll take that." <laughs> I, that- yeah, I probably would have cracked up. She is right. some, She was something yeah. else. So you could get away with it. Only thing you get. Totally, totally. To, to anybody. Out every day. To anybody, she could have yeah. gotten away with yeah. it. So if you you look back on all my children, is there one person that you each think you learned the most from? Catherine. Oh. <laughs> One person I learned the most from? Yeah. Working opposite or, you know, or a director or, you know. Okay. Working with the people that I worked with, I would say Eva LaRue. Yeah. Because she had, I would say Eva, she played my sister on the mm-hmm. show. And I, I just spoke to, I, I was on social media with her the other day. And I just, I watch her and I'm just saying, you know, she had so many emotional scenes. And this was leading up to, more and more screen time for me. And so, you know, her Edmund's dying and this and that. 
So I'm watching her and I'm thinking to myself, she had serious emotional scenes where it's just breakdown crying. Oh my and, gosh, you know, yeah. Even though we're laughing, we're laughing in the hair and makeup room, like, hey, Dios mio, que lastima. Like we're pretending we're on these like Spanish soap operas and we're fa- having fun and playing in the hair and makeup room like we always did. But when it came down to going upstairs into the studio, it was serious. Like, um, and she did she did tremendous work, especially when it came down to emotional scenes. Mm-hmm. She taught me a lot. Also, I will say Socorro Santiago. Socorro played my mother mm-hmm. on the show, and I would say that she taught me a little bit more about method acting more than emotional acting. So whenever I would have fun and think it's fun in the in one level, I'd go upstairs, and I was a totally different person then. So I, I, mm-hmm. I kind of felt like a difference of of uh, like a transition i went upstairs to the studio and i was not catherine anymore i was people are looking for catherine they're looking for rosa you know so there's a difference mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. so i think um i think those two people really made an indelible mark on on my career and how my 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 uh, my future as an actor is yeah that's great C- carrie oh hands down david canary you know yeah. david really was my, i called him my new york dad yeah and his dressing room was across from mine and if we you know, went through periods of time where we didn't work together as much. He would knock on my door and check in on me. And he'd do that with Kelly as well, with Kelly Ripa. You know, we were like his kids. Um, And we talked so much about, you know, father and daughter relationships and, you know, our personal lives and how, you know, that's affected us as people and so forth. And so we really got to bring a lot of that to set and their there's, there were times when it got really personal for, for each of us, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. and when I, you know, there's one scene in particular I can think of where he had a hard time getting through it. And every time I would turn mm-hmm. around and look at him in the eye, you know, I could see that it was personal for him. And, um, but just to work with him and get to do it twice, like get to do it, <laughs> Adam, Adam <laughs> and Stewart. Stewart, you know, and of course I always had a soft spot for Stewart because that was pretty much Sky's only friend for a lot of the portion time I was there. But just to see him and and to and those days when he played both characters, to see him switch, you know, um, which I know were very stressful days for him. It just was incredible. Yeah, it must be interesting because like Lauren grew up watching him, but you're coming in and you didn't know his work. And to watch that out of, you know, Lauren knew it from the screen. You're seeing it for the first time in front of your face must have really been an incredible experience. Yeah. I mean, I really was so blessed coming in and and getting to work with the actors I did. I mean, our whole cast then was incredible, you know? Um, And so, yeah, David, for sure. Um, I got to see him many years later. There was, I guess it was when they wrapped the show. They did, um, Mm -hmm. they had a party in, in Los Angeles and, um, and I got to see him there briefly and it was just really, really nice to see him again. And, you know, I think as actors, especially, you know, that was, I was doing guest stars and recurring and that kind of thing, but that was my first contract role. That was a big deal. It was a big job for me. And I think, you know, the show, when you leave the act, the, the acting still goes on, the stories still go on. And I think sometimes people don't realize like how much you've, um, taken you know from those experiences mm-hmm. like how much they really meant to you you know so it was nice to be able to say that to him that's awesome yeah. tc what about you uh it's a list of people <laughs> yeah I mean, seriously it really was a, a, a lot to do with well of course judy Bly wilson and uh, lorraine broderick um Judy Bly Wilson was the casting director. Yeah. Yeah. I and I'm sure. And I'm right. sure they know they know more than all of us. <laughs> well, you're right. That's probably the reason that they're also in the I so tell you. A, a lot of a, a lot of the support that I got when I came on because I was completely lost came from just off outside of the workplace was from like Kelly Ripa. She and I lived in the same building. It was very close to the studio. So I would, you know, run up to her place and Kelly, Kelly, what do I do? What do I do? And, and uh, Eva and John would go hang out uh, with her. And, and so they were really my go-to people. And I 
was new to New York City. I was new to daytime. I was new to the process. And and they were really my my biggest support and gave me mm-hmm. the the reins and um, and showed me the way. And I I was so grateful for that because I really felt lost and alone. And I, I'm sure all of us did for whatever. We found level. a family, though. I will say we found a family. Different ways. Yeah, yeah. we did. And yeah. And, um, and they were, they were all outside of running lines and doing this and that and the mm-hmm. other. It was, there was other help, you know, finding places and, and doing things just regular day-to-day life. You know, mm-hmm. you need people around you and they were very good people and very supportive and everybody was very humble and they made time despite the fact that we're working 16, 18 hour days, yeah. they would make the time for me. So I was really, really grateful. You don't find that much in, in, uh, in prime time, Mm-mm. you know, everybody's super busy and they don't take a breath really. Yeah. Right. And there's not, enough, there's not as much camaraderie. I mean, we really found like a family unit to this day. We all keep in touch. I mean, uh, Lauren, I, not so much as I, I would like to, by the way, I would love to keep in touch. With you more. <laughs> I, yeah. I was going to say, I kind of dropped off the planet for a little while. Oh, so I've been like no, in I'm a kidding. cocoon. Yeah. I want to say one thing. I mean, I've been so fortunate because I've kept in touch with so many of our castmates. Mm-hmm. Harry, obviously, we've met many times. We have our diamond stories. Um, and and <laughs> don't forget your diamonds. Um, and then TC is literally like a, I consider her my dearest friend. She's come to visit me in Thailand at my house there and in USA. So we try as much as we can to be together. And we really developed a bond that is a lifelong kind of a, a dear friendship because we've gone through certain experiences that I don't think anybody else can really understand, but each other. But at the same time, we've met such, be- we're, they're just such beautiful people that I think the people yeah. that have come together, it just, it just, it, the, they cast the right people, but the people that they cast were the right fit for the friendships that we can still carry on with, you know? So And, and well, it I'm was so the timing of it all because the timing that you all four were yeah. together. Mm-hmm. You know, because well, it doesn't always doesn't always happen. That theme no. of generosity you've heard from everybody, because to me it blew me away that the veterans were like the most generous, the most the supportive, best. yeah, uh, just totally the best. The ones, that, about- the, the ones that had every right to be like, "Oh, you little yeah, yeah, yeah." yeah. Nope. But nope. I, I have to say for, for me, much like Catherine's experience with Eva, I would have to say Julia Barr because her her emotional availability just <laughs> blew me away. I mean, she was so invested um, in my character as a daughter figure that she could mm-hmm. just... Supporting you all the way, yeah. Well, not only that, but just right there was tears. And I like right. needed more space to like get into that. And it was like, she could flip a switch, which was amazing. Um, David Canary was, well, first of all, he was always my go-to if anybody like in life made a wisecrack about bad acting on soap operas. I was like, well, let me tell you, there was a man named David yeah. Canary that yeah. I would put up against you know, <laughs> Brando or De Niro or whoever, I dare you. Um, and he was just so kind and, and generous. And um, uh, lastly, I will say it was really funny you asking Carrie about being a recast because she had the experience of being, and like she said, had that space. And, oh, the people who had to come in right after another actor – I got be to hard. work with those people. So I had two Scots. I had, I believe it was three Pierces um, oh, wow. that Janet and I worked with. And I had, I believe, two gyms. And every single instance, it was like, you show up for work and there's a new actor in the role. So, wow. and Janet, uh, and Robin Matson was amazing in that regard too. Because she was like, an anchor as we were interacting with these characters. It was a trip. Yeah, she's a pro. Amazing. Well, while while you're on the subject of Scott Chandler and one of my friends from Guiding Light, I believe TC and Lauren worked with the hilarious Daniel Cosgrove as Scott Chandler. 
Mm-hmm. Yes. What What do you remember about Danny? He, hysterically funny. <laughs> you can't. He, he, you just walk. He walks in the room, and and I, I, you just automatically just start laughing before anything is done. It's just everything is hysterically funny with him. I think one um, of the funniest one of the funniest men I've met. He, he is. He is. He is. I, I remember. Um, some scenes that Danny and I got into trouble because I was playing, what was it, the the nun um, scene? It was the um, <laughs> Kelsey's imagination that a- after uh, falling in love with everybody and, and getting nowhere with that, <laughs> she decided she would be a nun. And, and so she had these Mick Kelsey visions that she was this nun um saving um <laughs> saving danny cosgrove and and of course it was you know the, the flying nun with the the hat and the singing that french song and like the sound song. of music or something like yeah. That. yeah exactly and and so many scenes that it was very hard to be serious in and we were laughing so hard tears were coming out of our eyes and, <laughs> And it, it's sort of like you see on, on SNL, you see a lot of the actors having a, a difficult time not laughing yes. as they're telling their- They have to break, they break character. So they it break makes character, me think, it's hard. It and, makes me think of Katie okay, McQueen. Okay, you see, I have to tell you one thing. I have to share one thing. Once she was broke, oh, it was my dad. Okay. So when my father, whenever I'm on the phone oh, no. with my dad- Oh no, is this a Chicago? Can I do it? I have to do it, yes, yes, yes. Go ahead, go ahead. Okay. Jim does this, so wait, her dad does Jim this. Jim Gardner, okay. So my father, okay, a couple years back, TC was gonna come visit me in, in Connecticut. So I'm FaceTiming her and I'm like, what well, time's your flight, you know, blah, blah, blah. And then all of a sudden I turn the photo, I'm like, yeah, my parents are at my house. and. You know, I'm I'm in USA, and I'm like I'm like say hi to everybody, TC. And then my father takes the phone. He's like this. He's like this, and may he rest in peace, the late great uh, Ray McDonald, who played uh, Dr. Joe Martin. Mm-hmm. Okay, so I think your first entrance to all my children was when you open the doors, and then Ray McDonald, who played Joe Martin, sits there and goes like this. He's like. Kelsey, I thought you were in Chicago. So, <laughs> so then, every time, every time she calls and my father's around, my dad's like, Kelsey, I thought you were in Chicago. And the locker room. <laughs> no, but he loves he loves to say that. He loves to say it. Kelsey, I thought you were in Chicago. <laughs> Well, to see, no, I mean, I'm an Eastern <laughs> um, the fans were asking if you can share memories of Ben Jorgensen as well, but also mm-hmm. Ray McConnell and uh, Lee Merriweather, right? You got to work with her. Mm. Oh, yeah, Lee so was amazing. Ben Jorgensen was, was uh, great at improv and he, he, his personality and his and the character that was written for him was was so interesting that when you it, it made it very easy to react off of him because it was it was easy to engage you weren't working with somebody who was just not that this really ever happened on the show but just regurgitating lines mm. there was beats and moments that were always from um, from one scene to the next, always surprising to you. So you could you could easily engage with him when you were in a scene. And what was more interesting was that Kelsey's character really fell in love with the person. And then his character uh, was revealed to be um, gay and, and she still loved him. She loved him and thanked him for being a special friend. So there was a, a, a true level of love. It wasn't just the romantic, uh, seductive kind of, of love. There was a, a, just a sincerity of the level of love that she had for him. On, on Ray McDonald, he was, he was a character. He, he, was, he always had something going on. He was always talking about something. And... And he was always willing to run lines with with me, and and uh, whenever I'd walk up 
buy him, he'd say, oh, oh, oh here, here she comes again. Here comes the, the, the trouble. Here comes the trouble. Because <laughs> uh, that's what my character was always stirring up trouble. He the yes. trouble. Yes, exactly. Yeah, trouble coming. Ben, and, ben had come to my house. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I don't want to hijack your conversation. No, that's okay. Go ahead. Tell uh, about, yeah, about the. No, ben, had, ben, ben had also come to my house a few times um, in the past few years, right before his passing, as a matter of fact. Uh -huh. um, he had come to visit us uh, in Connecticut, and he was a very animated character. He was a very beautiful soul. You could tell that he might have been suffering from a bit of mental instability, but I'm not going to testify to that because I don't. Who knows what's going on? This is why I want to yeah. defer this to something that's very important, which is mental health awareness and mental yes. awareness. Which Carrie Carrie has a beautiful program called State of Slay. Yes, I was going to ask Carrie to talk about I want that. To talk yes. about that because, so this is a, a great transition for that. Because and and I, I worked with recipes, Ben. But, I yeah. worked with Ben on As the World Turns. He was a good soul. He was a good soul. Mm. He yeah. was a beautiful person. I saw him yeah. a couple. I have so many good, good videos of him dancing and having a great time. But you'd never know what was going on inside the person's brain, what's going on inside their mind and mm -hmm. how they're feeling. So, you know, let's just be kind to each other, right? But yeah. I'll pass it over to Carrie because yeah. Carrie, you well, have to play. Yeah. yeah, Carrie, tell us and about the state of slay. I and and what you know prompted you to be a mental health advocate? You know, um, I started State of Slay a few years ago. Um it was just a calling, like it kept coming up in my life. I I was um you know, in, in recovery myself and had gone through a pretty um, difficult time with mental health issues um, in, in, in my life. And, and as I was in recovery and seeking help for that, I was reaching out a lot one-on-one -on -one with people who were also, you know, struggling with mental health. And it kept coming up of, you should write, you should write, you should write. Mm -hmm. And prior to that, I never ever talked about mental health in in a situation like this in in the press in public yeah. at all anytime i did an interview it was great and i tell some funny stories mm -hmm. and that was the end of it yeah. um and it was it was really um like scary at first to hit some you know post you know and talk about really my journey and what I'd been through and what I still go through every day. Um, now it, it's something I talk about every day and it's something that's so needed. And I'm also an advisory board member for a nonprofit called Attitudes in Reverse. And they go into classrooms to talk about mental health and suicide mm -hmm. prevention. And um, when I'm able to, although with Zoom, I've been able to do um, presentations that way as well. Um, when I'm able to, I, I go in and, and talk to students about my story and my journey and to let them know that there's hope and that they're yeah. not alone. And, and that's really what the idea behind State of Slay was, is to learn to love yourself and to support one another. Because, in, in, you know, I know from my journey that I can't do this alone. And there are a lot of people in my life who support me and have, who have helped me. And so I intend to pay it forward and give back because that's how mm -hmm. I stay well. And yeah. um, there's- Well, Carrie, I would love to talk offline. I would love to do a show about this, about Good. mental yes. health, because I do think, you know, we You'll all- You'll reach know, a lot of people. Yeah, yeah we, we, we yeah. just know from, you know, it was just on the news what the um, what the yeah. Surgeon General was saying about children, you know, yeah. the effects of the pandemic right now. They just yeah. released statistics. I didn't pay attention to what they were, but I know. Yeah, they're not. Going. And it, no. it they're was not already good. it yeah. was already going so far downhill right. with social right. media and then the right. pandemic. On right. Top of it. Yeah, yeah. But I, I just I, I know what talking about this does. We need, you know, with, you know, murders and gunshots and all right, of that yeah. stemming from mental Something health. Something happens. So this has, yes, you know, yeah. having, con you know, I, conversations is to me, well, I think any conversation, even, even this, because you might be changing mm -hmm. someone's life, but truly I do believe conversations can change the world. And, you know, mental health yeah. is one conversation. Sadly, we haven't had enough of over the years. Yeah. So no, true. I, I agree. I agree. And I, as I say all the time, when, when we stay silent, people die. 
Mm. That's right. You know, because they yeah. think that they're the only ones. I felt like yeah. this before I got oh, absolutely. It's even under the carpet attitude. Yeah, it's, under the it's, carpet it's too, only yeah. me. Nobody's going to understand. No, they're going to think no. I'm crazy. Yeah. Um, you know, it bubbles all up and then yeah, that were not true. You know, when I reached yeah. out for help, I had like an abundance of support and love around me. And there are so many <clears throat> programs to help people. Many of them are free, you know, um, to get support and, and help. So, yeah, Alan, we'll definitely talk further. I, I, I would love that. Yeah. I, I was, I was one, thing I wanna, one thing I want to say, though, is that for all my children, they were very forward minded when it came to specific topics that were oh, yes, still a little bit taboo. Were ahead of the time. Oh, yeah. Right? Like they we were like rest. you know how the golden girls were ahead of their time. Okay, right. all my children was ahead of their time too. No, they they really were. Like the oh, show please, started the with a Vietnam no, they really, story. That's right. Yeah, right. I mean Agnes, this show, Agnes, this, show, this, show this, was a, this was crazy because you know you right. have the first gay teacher. This was not normal in 1995 or 96. No. Okay, this was considered taboo still. Okay, you weren't allowed to do that. You were you know you don't have the first. We were the first Latino family on daytime television. Like and we, you we have not, my character's former pornographic pictures being discovered yes, online. Exactly. Exactly. Like, exactly. So we crazy had a cutting lot of edge different, stuff. And then and then an unmarried woman like, you know, Kelsey Jefferson who was pregnant and is trying to steal a baby and um, you know, you're yeah. talking about abortions and things. We had a lot of we had a lot of topics that were not just taboo, but they were date they were like like shifty grounds that you would not I, necessarily oh, yeah. And the gay I'm surprised that that was yeah. okay to that, but I'm I'm, a, yeah. I'm I'm happy that we were able to handle those topics, and I'm happy Ma that we were making able to Erica Kane's daughter a lesbian. I mean, yeah, exactly. Agnes, Agnes yeah. Nixon, yeah. the Lorraine you know, really... yeah. and with an eating yeah. disorder as well, with an eating yeah. disorder. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Catherine, the, you're... and to have it well written though, too. You have. Yeah. You, you don't know. always get that. Yeah. Exactly. Now and then, and then, you know, even though it's a little bit, um, it's a, it becomes salacious. There is a moral to the story at the end of it, and you can reach out to people in certain ways. And you know, people can. You'd be so surprised even today. That's why we're here today. The loyalty of the fans. People can reach out, mm -hmm. and we understand. Mm -hmm. We miss you guys. We love you. We love the fans. We're very excited. We, the loyalty of that, and just coming into your TV every day at one o'clock Eastern yeah. Standard Time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. It's not like 5 a.m. Singapore time. <laughs> but, yeah. Yeah. And it's we'll so amazing. It's it's amazing that something that so many people dismiss as trivial, a soap opera, can address and right. have a positive impact yeah. on such yeah. important yeah. topics. And I love TC that you mentioned the charity events we used to do. Oh yeah. That, yeah. that was fun. like honestly one of my favorite, if not my favorite Love part it. of being on the show, because fans would come to these events. And it was like, mm -hmm. oh, my goodness, we can make a difference for a good cause mm -hmm. just by showing up. Like, yeah. <laughs> it was just an incredible yeah. opportunity. And I love that shared um, yeah. vision. And I remember, Carrie, when State of Slay was like just getting started and that being something, you know, recovery, mental health, that being something that we kind of bonded over. Um, and something that I speak about too. And a lot of that really came to the forefront through my time on All My Children. So it's great, great platform. I'm, I'm just, we had a great I'm platform. Just, yeah, I'm just really glad that you and Alan, you as well, are you know using platform to help get, to help break those taboos and get people talking. Yeah. Well, I, I haven't done a show on that, but I think that subject is so important. But you and you want I, to, and you will. Yes, I do. <laughs> and I, I did I did work um, in, a couple years ago, about eight years ago, as a lifeline counselor for the Trevor Project. Oh, wow. So answering calls from, you know, people struggling. And that's, that's intense. Intense. Catherine, you are going to do the Glass Menagerie. Do you want to tell fans about that? Yes. Yes, I do. <laughs> yes, I yes, I do. I vote yes on the committee of one. <laughs> we're the committee of what? Five. We're five. We're five. <laughs> yes, I'm so excited. Um, yes, it's actually um, going to be. Uh, I'm going to be starring in the Glass Menagerie as Amanda Wingfield, mm -hmm. um, a Tennessee Williams production. Uh, 
I play Am I on the Wing Field Um uh, but you'll have to stay tuned because tickets go on sale uh, mid jam. You can go on to the website and I will keep you posted. But until we get our uh, publicity and advertisement set, then we start to sell the tickets, obviously. That's how it works, guys. So, so can I, can uh, I, we, I just went to my, my uh, photo sheet. Yeah. I want yes, to explain yes, yes. one thing, Catherine, because you're in Singapore. So you have to kind of build the picture. She's, this is basically where okay. she is in Singapore. This is basically the Broadway of Singapore. It's the biggest, most prestigious theater around. And she's cool. got the, the starring role, and I'm coming out to, to see it. You are coming. Uh, that's yeah. awesome. And that's so, um, and so it's, it, because she's in Singapore, it's sort of like, where do you buy the tickets? Not, there's not many people that can, can go buy the tickets. I get your house seats, honey. Don't worry. I know some people who owe me a couple favors. <laughs> good, 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 good. Um, <laughs> One of our yep. fans, Marilyn, um, you know, on our conversation about mental health, said the pandemic was a trigger for my anxiety and depression. And oh I talk goodness, about yes. it in case it can help someone else. Oh, good. So, it, it Thank was, you. Yeah, it yeah. was you know. for me. It was for me, too. I, I have to say that I had some really dark days during, especially during lockdown. Um mm -hmm that I hadn't experienced in many, many years. And, you know, now I have tools, you know, that I didn't have before. So yeah. I had to really dig deep into my uh, toolbox and go, okay, I need to get back to basics yeah. and, um, and do those things that make me feel good. I need to reach out to people, yes. let them know how I'm feeling. I need to give back where I can and get out of here, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. and, um, and, you know, talk about it because more people are going to understand and relate to that than not. Mm -hmm. And you and don't know until you say something. Yeah. 100%. So true. I have to say real quick, Alan, did you say Marilyn was her name? Yes. Uh, so one, thank you, Marilyn. And two, Carrie, as you were saying that, I think it's really easy for people sometimes to think that they, well, I don't have a platform. Well, that's great. Carrie Genzel has a platform. Alan, you know, right. these actors, these people, everybody, you have a bigger sphere of influence than you think. And if everyone would open that dialogue and and get those conversations started we all could have a massive impact so i just want to encourage everybody there are more people who understand you than than you realize and there are more people that could use your help than you realize so well well, well said before i forget ha was there anybody else who had something they wanted to promote? Because I, I want to. I know sure. that TC has a couple of things that she would like to share. So I'm well. We the man who thought that. he was Salvatore Dali. Uh, yeah, the man who thought that. And he I was have Salvatore a quickie. Dali. I have a okay. quickie after TC. Yeah, and, um, and Lauren, I'm going to end before I sign off with your one minute recap of Laura Kirk English. <laughs> okay. Because I love it. Uh, uh, we're, we're tying up the uh, finishing of The Man Who Thought That He Was Salvador Dali, and that's with uh, Philippe Mora. Um, you guys can go and a very well-known director. And we're finishing that, and um, I'm auditioning, and I've actually got an audition On Zoom. Right after this. <laughs> right? Yeah. yeah. And so, so that's... Zoom. That's what's going on. I can't. Yeah, she is an incredible mother Aww. of two beautiful Aww. children. I will say that. Uh, oh, and, 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 and Lauren, we'll, we'll, we'll come to you in a second. Carrie, uh, one of our fans, can you just share your memories of Supernatural? Oh my gosh, I have so many, so many memories of you Supernatural. Have so much. I don't even know. I kept looking on you. You have so much work that I can't even. My, I can't. Keep my up my friend uh, executive produced and wrote it, but I don't think during your time there. Oh yeah, gosh, yeah. I I was in the first season, and then I came back ten years later and from the dead and played another character. <laughs> yeah, he was, like he was he was later. He was like five, 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 five it's through totally eight. Totally yeah. like a soap opera. Listen, <laughs> it, you know, for fans of Supernatural, they're like so fans, man. They are loyal and excited. Um, one of the episodes, which is a fan favorite, just aired right before we went on air. So um, 
you that. know, it, it's it's a show where, and again, to tie in the mental health, it's a show where um, mm. Jared Padalecki, who is one of the leads on the show, is very open about his struggles with mental health. And so definitely that fan base um, is a fan base that gravitates towards that kind of um, healing and talk. And so that's really exciting. But God, there's way too much to even go into with Supernatural. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Wrap it up. But I will say, I do have a few things coming up and I'll end it with that. And I need to put my glasses on because I'm not going to be able to read what I jotted down. But um, <laughs> I am going to be at an event in May in Peachtree City, uh, Georgia, um, oh. called The Camp. And it's a fan event. And so there's like photo ops and autographs and there's all kinds of fun activities. Okay. And... Um, they, you can actually book a dinner. We're doing like a, a dinner with me to talk about real stuff, this stuff. Yeah, um, yeah. And so it's a one hour dinner with me. Tickets are on the website, thecampevents.com. Um, I will do a post on my social media as well, just so it's there. Um, and that's May 28th and 29th. I'm also recurring on the fourth season of Sistas, which um, the fourth season starts airing in Tyler January. Tyler Perry. Right? Tyler Woo! Perry. Um, and I was on this past season, season three. And girls, you want to talk about crazy work schedules? Oh, so gosh. Look, are nothing compared to Tyler Perry. You do over 100 <laughs> pages a day. There is no rehearsal, no nothing. What you see on air is the first time anybody wow. has seen anything on wow. set. And he doesn't That's cut if there's a, I did. Thank two God episodes. we had, thank God we got to have a good training round, right? I know I did two episodes that were all in the same set and he ran it like one scene. Wow. wow. Okay. Crazy. Two whole episodes. That's so, amazing. Thank God for soaps. Um, anyway, so sister mm -hmm. starts airing in January on BET and then in August 11, uh, 12th through 14th, I will be at a supernatural convention in Arlington, Virginia, uh, which is a creation, um, convention. And that is August 12th through 14th. And they're doing a free screening on Friday, the 12th of just your, just my imagination, which is the episode that aired today. So you don't have to have admission tickets. You can come for free and watch the show with me and Nate Torrance, who played Sully, um, August 12th, which is a Friday in Arlington, Virginia. I think I got it all. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> it is so hard. For one me. last thing for, yeah. for Glass Menagerie. Yeah, so the tickets work. go on sale mid-January. You can go to pangdemonium.com. Pangdemonium, it's kind of a play on words. Adrian Pang, who worked in the West End on Broadway, it's kind of a cheeky little um, a play on words, but pangdemonium.com tickets will go on until I believe mid-January. It's at the Victoria Theater in Singapore, and it will be from March 11th to 27th. So if you feel like traveling, it's actually a very safe place to travel. And Singapore is extremely, um, you know, clean, efficient, and a beautiful place to visit. So I suggest if you want to come out and see me, I'll be playing Amanda Wingfield. Uh, as um, she's got room at the house. Stay yeah. Over. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, she does. Come on, come on, come on home. <laughs> Hold on, well, yeah. wait a minute. She'll, she'll she'll host everybody. That's right. Um, and Lauren, you know, uh, like Carrie with Supernatural, Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Just as you know, the fans. I was a big Buffy, so the fans are you yeah. Know, well, just as rabbit. It it is a trip because events that I speak for. Like there will be, you know, a, a middle-aged couple that like both the husband and the wife were like huge Buffy fans and they're, you know, they want a picture. And then when I speak for youth, there are kids who just are, think it's the most amazing thing. Like they care more that I was on one episode of Buffy the Vampire Slayer than a <laughs> for three years. And I'm like, hey, that makes you think I'm cool. So you'll listen to what I have to say, rock and roll. Um, but I, um, part of the reason, and that's really cool, Carrie, I have family in Peachtree City. Like, I had no idea that you were going to be in the Atlanta You got area. your peaches down in Georgia. <laughs> that's <laughs> right. Indeed. Indeed. And it is true. They are the best. Um, but uh, part of the reason for my kind of cocoon the past year, a, a few different reasons, but part was finishing a children's book, which amusingly is very in keeping with our theme. It's called Think Good, Be Good. And uh, about 
taking thoughts captive, you know, just because something like Carrie, you were saying, dipping into the toolbox, you know, just because a thought pops into our head doesn't mean we have to keep thinking that and we don't have to continue going down that path. Um, and I feel like if we can help kids grasp that at an early age, that that would go a long way. Like the negative way. spiral, the spiral, negative spiral goes. Absolutely. I so I'm. We all have I'm that. Still, I think everybody does. This. Absolutely. I when everybody I does. It, like this yeah. negative spiral that goes down the drain and you're like, well, you can, it's hard to catch up, you know? Yeah. I think we all suffer from this. COVID's taught us a lot too. I think we've all been uh, suffering in different ways and things, yeah. but yeah, that's a very mm -hmm. good tool to, to when remember I, and to be cognizant yeah, When I shared it at women's events, it's funny that you say that Catherine, because they're like moms and grandmas are like, Yes, yes, I want that. Like, when will it be available? I mean, I want it for myself. Like, I want it for my kids yeah, too. But we like, yeah. all need it. exactly. Yeah, I need so it for myself. No, I'm still working out um, the the uh, publishing situation, so I'm not sure yet exactly when it will be available. Get in touch with me privately, okay? Because uh, we can we can get in touch with you. get in touch with me privately. We'll handle it. Yeah, no, that would be that would be amazing. I've, I've, so, I've published quite, we have a publishing printing and publishing company. We've done plenty oh, cool. of books. Yeah, see, so please see Alan listen. how you bring see, together. See, I love that. Exactly. I love that. All well, my guys, children, baby. Guys, well, you have children. to listen to Lauren's one minute recap of her character. It is hysterical. Lauren. Yeah, yeah it's, it, it's a fantastic icebreaker <laughs> um, when I speak. So here we go. My little piece of AMC history three year arc in 60 seconds. Okay. <clears throat> I was a homeless teenage orphan who ran away to Pine Valley for a better life, got adopted by Brooke English, survived a fire, appendicitis, and a kidnapping, all separate occasions, learned to read, dated Scott Chandler, the richest tops guy in town, volunteered at a youth center until compromising photos from my past turned up online, which I had taken at the tender age of 15, only to earn money to pay for my mom's tuberculosis medication. But I was so ashamed, I set fire to the photos in the basement of our building, and tragically the building burned down, and my mom was too sick to escape. So all this time I was racked with guilt over being responsible for my own mother's death, then Jim, the guy who took the photos, turned up in Pine Valley, conned Brooke into falling in love with him, so I had to confess to her everything that had happened, and as any loving, protective mother would do, she sent me to China to live with some friends and shot Jim in cold blood. Wait, 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 Rosa Santos, wait, 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 hold on, I gotta do it, hold on, if I can, I haven't, I haven't okay. written it down. Okay, just so you I'm know, Oh, did you have one? You had one too? No, but I'm just going to think of it. Sister goes into the witness protection program. Other sister dies in a plane crash. Others, a brother, the father dies in um, a drunk driving accident. Other sister leaves for uh, Chicago, never to be seen again. I never was killed off. I just went upstairs to get coffee and never came back. <laughs> so long. That that's the and best the, part the of so. The coffee's still like waiting to be brewed. So I don't, you're yeah. you're still upstairs. I don't have one, but I'm like thinking to myself: witness protection program, plane crash. I don't yeah, Rosa's still upstairs, going, "Oh wait, the show got canceled." <laughs> <laughs> Rude. Ladies, thank you so much for spending this hour. Now thank it's you, Alan. time. For, Catherine, it's time for breakfast, and it's time for dinner. <laughs> it's time for dinner. As a matter of all. fact, you know, as a matter of fact, I actually have to go in, in an hour because I'm helping a friend out who ended up going to USA, so I'm going to help a friend out and go check on her house for her because we want to make sure that her house is okay. Good. That's important. Well, ladies, stay well. Thank, thank, you so thank you so much, Alan. Thank you, guys. Wonderful. Thank you, thank you so much for having great us. Great to see y'all. Good to see you, you girls. You're so welcome. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Bye. Love you guys. Miss you, Carrie. Miss you, TC. <laughs> Bye, guys. Thank you so much to Catherine, Carrie, Lauren, and TC for spending time here today. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel down below. Turn on the notifications for reminders of all upcoming shows. Tomorrow, Friday, December 10th, please tune in to see Guiding Light, uh, Guiding Light's Wendy Moniz, who is currently starring on Yellowstone. Have a great night, everybody, and stay safe.